Welcome to the JARS CARS Joint Forum toward post-COVID-19 networking. I'm the moderator of this session, Satoko Fujiwara from the University of Tokyo. Being also the chair of the International Connections Committee of the JARS, Japanese Association for Asia Studies, I've organized a session with the committee members. So this session, we have invited two distinguished scholars from the CARS, Korean Association for Asia Studies, Professor Shin An and Dr. Hyun Chan Koo. Welcome, Professor Shin An and Dr. Hyun Chan Koo. Professor Shin An is a professor of the Department of Christian Social Welfare at Paichu University. He specializes in phenomenology of religion, world Christianity, and new religious movements. Dr. Hyun Chan Koo, lecturer of the Department of Religious Studies at Seoul National University specializing in the cognitive science of religion. From the JARS, we also have two speakers, Professor Aya Honda and Dr. Shuhei Fuji. Professor Honda is an associate professor with sociology of religion at Hyogo University, specializing in Buddhism and gender studies. Dr. Shuhei Fuji is a lecturer at Tokyo Kasi University, specializing in cognitive science of religion. In addition, Professor Takaya Kawase from the JARS will be a discussant of this session. Professor Kawase is a professor of the Department of History at Kyoto Prefectural University, specializing in the modern history of regions in Korea. I'd also like to give a comments at the end. Let me first explain the purpose of this session. The forum is thus composed of two young scholars, Dr. Ku and Fuji and two mid-career scholars, Professor Shin and Honda, from the CARS and the JARS. It aims to build scholarly networks suitable to the post-COVID-19 situation by reflecting upon the four scholars' experiences in conducting their research projects. In other words, the forum not only takes a look at notable examples of research projects that have been going forward in each country, but also finds out what young scholars of the two countries expect from international networking with a focus on East Asia. It will further discuss how both national associations and international associations such as IHR, International Association for the History of Religions, can support individual scholars' efforts in international collaborations. There have been several attempts to establish an East Asian region association for the study of religion in the past, but it has increasingly become burdensome for national associations to plan and host substantially large international conferences. In addition, COVID-19 has forced many associations to cancel their conferences, thus hindering scholars from physically visiting each other. Nevertheless, COVID-19 has also changed the way of communication with a greater variety of online, online options for meetings. Against such a backdrop, the four speakers as well as the discussion of this forum, we will discuss whether international networks and collaboration among scholars region will benefit young and mid-career scholars, taking concrete examples from the, from the four speakers. Whether an East Asian network will also be welcomed. And what are the major challenges in building networks among East Asian scholars? The forum starts with a 15-minute presentation from each speaker. Then Professor Kawase will present questions and comments to which the speakers will be expected to reply in, in turn. I will then ask some wrap-up comments and open the question to the floor. From now on, I will address each speaker by his or her first name. The first speaker is Shuhei. Shuhei, could you start your presentation? Yes. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Chuhei Fuji. So I am so thankful and honored to be able to participate in this joint session with distinguished scholars. In my presentation, I will first outline the development of the cognitive and evolutionary science of region, CESR. International networking is important to any field of study, but it is especially crucial for CESR 
because it is relatively new area. I will then present a summary of my doctoral thesis and of my current project. I will finally discuss how I have been benefited by international networks among CSR scholars. CSR emerged in the 1990s. From the very beginning, it has been an interdisciplinary field among anthropologists, scholars of region, and psychologists. The early group of CSR researchers included Pascal Boyer, Harvey Whitehouse, Stuart Gasly, Scott Adran, E. Thomas Rawson, Robert Macari, Lusa Martin, Ilka Pusiaine, and Justin Barrett. Half of them worked in Europe and the other half in the United States. These anthropologists and scholars of region developed theories and hypotheses, some of which Barrett tested by psychological experiments. The group rapidly expanded, holding several meetings between 1998 and 2000, 2004. Ami Giatz, a former general secretary of the IHR, International Association for the History of Regions, joined the group and hosted two meetings in Ophus. Then, in 2006, the International Association for the Cognitive and Evolutionary Science of Region was founded, with Thomas Rawson and its, as its first president. This map shows current research centers in the field. Being a new approach, CESR did not necessarily emerge from traditional departments of the study of region. It required a new network of scholars across countries and disciplines for CSR to take shape into a distinctive approach. Let me explain next why I took an interest in CSR and wrote my thesis on it. I plan to do my PhD research on the history of the discipline of the study of religion. I soon noticed that works on CSR were almost entirely unrecognized among the Japanese scholars of religion. While CSR seems to be quite popular in Europe and North America, I attempted to find out why that was so from both theoretical and sociopolitical perspectives. From a theoretical perspective, I realized that theory-oriented scholars of region in Japan had strongly been influenced by postmodern and postcolonial theories, which were crucial of the modernist understanding of science. As a result, CSR was out of their scope as it was in line with the modernist version of empirical science. By contrast, uh, both postmodern or postcolonial theories and CSR in Western countries, despite repeated debates between the proponents of each, had more things in common. Especially in the North America, both developed as a reaction to the Eliadian study of region. CSR scholars criticized Eliade for not being scientific enough by presupposing the sacred as a transcendent entity, while post-colonial scholars criticized him for essentializing religious phenomena and ignoring their social embeddedness. From a sociopolitical perspective, it is 
noteworthy that CSR concomitantly expanded with the culture war in the United States. In particular, conflicts between creationists and atheistic evolutionists. Although the new atheists, such as Richard Dawkins and Daniel Dennett, were also known in Japan, the Japanese scholars of Weijong thought them too extreme and transgressing the border of methodological agnosticism. I amplified these points in my PhD thesis and argued that CESR emerged as a result of interactions between modernist and postmodernist scholars, connecting various views and resulting in a great shift in the intellectual landscape. This interdisciplinary role could be seen as the most important achievement of CESR. I have published the gist of my thesis in the method and theory in the study of Weijong Jana. I am currently engaged in a collaborative research project with Japanese psychologists and neuroscientists. The project aims to apply CESR theories and methods to the in-depth investigation of the current wages and spiritual landscape in Japan. While Japanese scholars in natural sciences have long dismissed topics regarding region, there is a new generation of psychologists and neuroscientists in Japan who are willing to cooperate with scholars of region. Scholars of region, including myself, play an indispensable role in the project because psychologists have never reflected upon the Judeo-Christian root of the concept of religion and spirituality. Without incorporating the study of religion perspective, the project would fail to identify parameters to measure the religious and spiritual aspects and tendencies of contemporary Japanese people. To look back, when I started my research on CSR as a doctoral student, there was no scholars of region I could work with in Japan. Let me finally talk about how I could join international networks among CSR scholars. As no class on CSR was offered at my university, the University of Tokyo, the only thing I could do was to read English articles and books on CSR by myself. Then, in my fifth year as a doctoral student, I obtained a visiting PhD student grant from Aarhus University in Denmark, which was, as mentioned, one of the hubs of CSR. I stayed in Aarhus for only a year but everything I learned from Professor Armin Diaz and other pro prominent scholars at the research unit, Region, Cognition and Culture, enabled me to elaborate and refine my thesis. Moreover, Professor Diaz convinced me of the importance of networking for CSR researchers. He said that networks could make interdisciplinary research possible across boundaries between disciplines and countries. He emphasized that CSR itself was a product of networking. And this uh, right side picture, uh, he, he is uh, arming the arts. My experiences at office completely changed my interdisciplinary mindset and attitude. Soon after returning to Japan, I joined the Japanese Psychological Association, an association of strangers for scholars of region, and started presenting papers at its annual conference. In fact, 
The conference of Japanese Psychological Association is currently underway. I have two presentations at the conference. I then became associated with psychologists and neuroscientists showing interest in my work. I eventually managed to initiate a new research project with them. I also started attending IACESR conferences as well as CESR panels at the annual meetings of the American Academy of Region and other associations. I met Dr. Ku three years ago at an IACSR conference. As mentioned, I only have a few scholars to share my research interests with in Japan. Without attending these international conferences, it is impossible to receive good feedbacks on my research and keep myself informed of updates in the CESR area. I also believe that research communications and networking based on East Asia will be valuable. Contribution to CESR from scholars of region in East Asia are still limited in number. However, demands for data from Asian countries are increasing. Although CESR has been arguing for a universality of human nature, its data have mainly been taken from Western countries. It has not yet been examined whether CESR theories are applicable to people in non-Western countries. If East Asian scholars work together, there will be more chances to obtain research funds which will enable them to systematically plan and conduct a joint survey in the region. As for whether JRS, KRS, or the IHR can provide support, I would like to propose two things. First, to organize sessions and other activities Focus on CSR. Second, to create working groups for scholars with shared interest in CSR. I would especially like to know who in South Korea and in other Asian countries have interest or even potential interest in CSR. Such information will be very helpful for my research. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Shuhei, for your informative presentation. All right, then our next speaker is Hyun Chan. Hyun Chan, please. Good afternoon. My name is Hyun Chan Go from Korean Association for Religious Studies. It's honorable that I can join this forum as a presenter today. Thank you for having me here. Now, uh, I'd like to talk about my recent works, personal experience of international networks, benefits from cooperation, and some suggestions. Let me introduce my recent works first to show what I'm doing in Korea as a cognitive scientist of religion. In April of this year, I published a book titled Infectious Disease Humanity, 감염병 인류 in Korean. The book is a result of collaborations with Dr. Park a neuroanthropologist and medical doctor. There are many books published about the COVID-19 situation, but this book has three characteristics that are unlikely to be found in other books. First, this book looks at the current pandemic situation through the evolutionary history in which virus and humans have co-evolved. Second, this book illustrates that the evolution of the behavioral immune system has much influenced the human culture 
such as customs, rituals, and religions, and has also affected social issues such as discrimination, exclusion, and hate crimes in the pandemic situations. Third, this book argues that an honest and transparent understanding of human minds and behaviors will help people to deal with the COVID-19 situation better. Secondly, I like to talk about my translation of a book, Dan Sperber's Explaining Culture, uh, which I translated with uh, Professor Kim Yun Sung of Hanshin University, will be soon published in Korean. As the title says, this book seeks a naturalistic explanation of culture. The book suggests epidemiology of representations uh, as a key explanatory model and methodology, which has contributed greatly to the formation of a standard model of CSR. I'm sure that the book is uh, one of the most important modern classics in the field of CSR. The translation itself was already completed many years ago, but it could not be released due to various reasons. Fortunately, I expect that we'll see the book at the bookstores very soon. Lastly, I wanna talk about my research project. I'm currently conducting an empirical study on cognitive foundations of religious morality. The relationship between religion and morality has been a topic of great interest in Western academia for the past few decades. For example, the evolution of religion and morality project took place in two phases from 2012 to 2021, the interim findings of which have been published in prominent journals such as Nature in 2016. Of course, my research is different from these large scale studies. The goal of my research is to find out whether religious norms act as moderating variables in social prejudice and moral judgment. I asked 360 participants, including Protestants, Buddhists, and Catholics to answer 45 questions about social prejudice after simple psychological priming of religious norms. All research processes, including priming and surveys, were conducted online through Macromill and Brain, a famous research company in South Korea, and I started analyzing the data. Personal experience. In fact, the experience of the international network helped me a lot to work as a cognitive scientist of religion. Of course, like most other scholars' cases, the help comes from international associations. Among many associations, I was greatly helped by the IACSR, which has recently changed the name to the IACESR, the International Association for the Cognitive and Evolutionary Science of Religion. I have been interested in CSR since 2005, when I was working on my master's thesis. However, I had to study CSR almost alone because uh, there were very few colleagues who would study CSR together in South Korea, which was hard for me. I was not even sure that I was on the right track. So uh, I took a leave of absence from 2006 to 2008 after starting my PhD studies. And during the period, I was able to decide on my study direction thanks to the international network experience of the IACSR. Many scholars I met at IACSR helped me a lot. Among them, some senior scholars have greatly influenced my career. At the 2008 conference held at Aarhus University in Denmark, Professor Armin Hirtz helped me join the association with great hospitality. At the 2016 conference in Vancouver, professors Robert McCauley and Stuart Guthrie were kindly interested in my presentation and they provided me with great advice too. At the 2018 conference in Boston, Professor Thomas Lawson offered 
uh, his precious time during the conference to tell me a rich story about his academic journey and the difficulties he had to meet early in his career. With the help and encouragement of these uh, senior scholars and many others, I was able to confirm that my studies were fortunately on the right track. Also, I have received a lot of important guidelines and advice from them, which will help me overcome many difficulties that I might face in my life and career. I can never express my gratitude enough. These conferences gave me great opportunities to communicate not only with senior scholars, but also with younger and mid-career scholars with diverse specialties. Most members of IACESR seem to be interested in helping each other and to agree with the necessity of cooperation and collaborations. I also want to mention here that I met Dr. Huji for the first time at the 2018 conference in Boston. If he had not recommended me as a presenter, I wouldn't be here today. So for me, this forum is the first collaboration with Dr. Fuji. The international network was also helpful for my educational broadcasting activities in South Korea. In 2019, I participated in making a new documentary series titled Vero Bonun Ingan. Neurosapiens by EBS, Korea Educational Broadcasting System. I recommended Professor Dimitris Zigalatas, a former president of IACSR, as an uh, overseas interviewee. And then he readily agreed and appeared on the screen, speaking about his great cognitive studies on extreme rituals. The documentary series won the Gold Remy Award at the Houston International Film Festival. I think this was also possible uh, partly thanks to my international network. About uh, benefits expected from cooperation, I can only talk in terms of my research field. In CSR or uh, evolutionary and cognitive studies of religion, it is very important to collaborate with other scholars at home and abroad. The reasons are very simple. First, this is because I cannot work alone in CSR. When empirical research is required, it becomes more serious. There are so many things to perform, such as constructing and refining hypotheses, designing and conducting experiments, collecting and analyzing data, uh, writing and publishing papers, and obtaining research uh, fund, of course. I may also need more expertise from other fields such as anthropology and psychology. There are no scholars of religion who can easily cover all these things alone in South Korea. And I think that it wouldn't be different in Japan or elsewhere. Collaborations are fundamental. Second, collaboration is also beneficial for the development of the study itself. In evolutionary and cognitive studies, I think it is a very important task to solve the weird problem, that is the problem of the Western educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic society biases of the researchers and data. I believe that the experience of international cooperation among scholars from various cultures, including South Korea and Japan, can be a good starting point for resolving this issue. The evolution of religion and morality project, which I mentioned earlier, seems to have improved a lot about this issue in that the survey fields were diversified into uh, many non-Western societies, such as Mauritius, Tiva, Republic, India, Kenya, Vanuatu, and other countries. However, I believe that the study could have been even more comprehensive if South Korean or Japanese scholars had also participated in the study and, uh, and uh, collected more data from East Asia. 
the more competent scholars from South Korea and Japan participate in international collaborations, the better the quality of cross-cultural studies will be. Suggestions for better collaborations. Crossing the limits of space and language barriers has always been the most direct challenge. So I'm not going to mention it any further. However, new methods being tried in the recent COVID-19 situation are providing a good alternative. Exchanges using webinars can be attempted more frequently in various ways like today. I think the most productive goal is to jointly write and publish research papers together. Therefore, we must become accustomed to collaborative research itself. We need more experience of cooperation, not only with other countries' scholars, but also with different scholars from different academic fields, such as history, anthropology, psychology, cognitive sciences, and other fields. International collaborations can become more productive through cross-disciplinary cooperation experience, not only by cross-national cooperation in the same academic discipline. Therefore, I hope that the East Asian Network of Scholars in Religious Studies and international associations such as IAHR will also explore more collaborations with neighboring disciplines beyond intra-group cooperation. Thank you for attention. Thank you, Hyun Chan, for your very, very interesting paper. Thank you. And thank you. So our third speaker is Aya. Aya, please. Hello, uh, my name is Aya Honda, and uh, uh, thank you. I'm very grateful for uh, being able to take part in this uh, session today. And I'm teaching at Hyogo University. And um, the title of my presentation is uh, Buddhism and Gender for, and uh, Successful uh, uh, Collaborating for Our Success. And uh, this is the uh, this is the contents of uh, today's uh, presentation. And first, I would like to talk about uh, my encounter with uh, Buddhism and gender. And then I'll move on to international networks, like networks of Buddhist nuns and uh, maybe uh, scholars. And then thirdly, and lastly, and collaboration, collaborating for our success, like how Korea and Japan, the scholars can collaborate to to work together uh, for Buddhism and gender field, or the national organization like CARS, JARS, and the IAHR can do, uh, and international organizations like this can do to uh, promote and enhance more, um, uh, more uh, productive like outcomes. And uh, let me start my presentation on the next slides. And I would like to begin with my uh, personal research history. And it starts from uh, Japanese American ethnicity and Buddhism. And this one has long been a central part of my research path. The research methods observe and interview second and third generation Japanese American Buddhists at Japanese Buddhist temples in the ma mainland United States of America. I primarily network with scholars, Buddhists, and religious adherents of this ethnic group in the United States. In an interview I conducted when I was in graduate school, one second generation Japanese American lady said that some temple members consider the Buddhist Women's Association, which is called Fujinkai in Japanese, politically incorrect. The Buddhist Women's Association is well-known large temple affiliated organization in Jodo Shinshu Buddhism, uh, which is called, which is a Pure Land School. This association is formed in different levels, starting from an individual temple to a district to national and international. And this lady's comment was astonishing to me. I never heard such a remark in Japan. 
Uh, this traditionally, traditionally female only organization may be considered politically incorrect as it excludes a specific gender. However, gender equality and non-sexiest views are highly accepted and required for all clergy and religious communities in the United States. I slowly realized that researching this religious organization requires a gender perspective and not just a historical, doctrinal, and racial perspective. My research focuses on Buddhism and gender within Japanese American communities. And much of my, research, much of my sources, like interviewees and scholars, are found through my network. I did not use the existing international academic network for a long time. And aside from my uh, research in the United States, my personal experience became another force to research gender. My family was adopted into a Japanese temple when I was a late teenager. And I experienced a fem uh, being a female and being a female minister at Jodo Shishu Buddhist Temple in Japan. It allows me to see the research topic more closely and its issues. The standpoint or existence of females in, Jap in Japan's Buddhist temples remains obscure. And I began to participate in a group of women active in Buddhist temples called the uh, Kanto Network of Women and Buddhism. And members share experiences of being at temples and Buddhist communities across boundaries of denominational differences in the network. And this network annually publishes like journal because uh, it's called uh, Onna Tachi no Nyoze Gamo and in person. And many members in this network are also JARS members. And scholars have said that religious studies and gender studies have an ambiguous relationship. And gender studies remain religion blind or views religion as a manifestation of patriarchy. And religious studies continue to be gender blind and consider gender with a lack of academic neutrality. This tendency had been seen in general Buddhist studies in Japan and more so in Buddhist studies. And in 2020, one um, Buddhist affiliated university in Japan launched the Gender and Religious Research Center. The center aims to achieve gender equality through the findings of Buddhist studies and religious studies. And maybe uh, other Buddhist universities, there are a lot in Japan, and uh, those uh, universities can establish a similar center. And next, I would like to highlight uh, a couple of international networks. And first is uh, Sakya Dita. Uh, it is a group of Buddhist nuns with uh, different racial and ethnic backgrounds. The group comprises Asian and Caucasian ordained clergy and has branches in Europe, uh, North America and Asia such as South Korea and Taiwan. And this is their website. And they work for gender equality by providing women spiritual, social, and educational support. Sakedita is one source for Buddhist nuns to cooperate and work together for gender equality. And next, I would like to also like to mention uh, academic conference in Taiwan. Uh, Buddhist University, uh, Swan Chuan University, facilitated the International Conference of Religious Culture and Gender and Ethics in 2019. This is sponsored by the uh, Taiwan Ministry of Interior. It was the second conference of this kind. And the government supported international conference like this to encourage 
young scholars to pursue and share their uh, academic achievements. The other notable international network is the uh, Women Scholars Network in the International Association for Re uh, History of Religions, IAHR, as, as you all know. And this academic forum is a place for uh, female scholars in religious studies from all over the world to gather and share academic findings. It encourages uh, female scholars and uh, researchers to connect and collaborate on a larger scale. And this may be a good place to start discussing about uh, gender and religion and gender and Buddhism. And I am also very much in favor of having networks among religious scholars in East Asia, especially South Korea and Japan. And having gender perspectives in religious studies and Buddhist studies and is relatively new. The National Academic Association in East Asia, like Cards and Jars, can support many young and mid-career scholars by having, like for example, uh, Buddhism and gender studies, a panel or session in annual conferences. Here, uh, scholars can present their recent research and bounce ideas off each other. I would like to note cases in Taiwan and Japan. Uh, Taiwanese nun, who is also a professor, uh, she's very well known, a professor in uh, uh, Shi Chao Wei. She declared the abolishment of the eight precepts for nuns. And she's highly respected as a scholar, and she questioned the presence of a Buddhist priest, uh, Buddhist precepts given only to nuns. And another case was reported in Japan by a nun in a traditional Buddhist school. And she voiced that she was not treated equally with male priests in services and rituals due to the non-only precepts. The status of non remains low within some uh, Buddhist communities in Japan. Although the situation of nuns vary by country, there may be similar cases in other Buddhist communities. So it would be crucial for maybe for nuns in East Asia to work cohesively for gender equality but for scholars, East Asian researchers and scholars can investigate like each case and may be able to share their findings in the conferences. Like how do, how do we see uh, not only precepts like in each country or each area or each school, maybe we can have the discussion under this topic. And having said all of these, I would like to note two points that may become predicaments to the study of Buddhism and gender. And the first is a uh, highly uh, independent nature of Buddhist schools and denominations. Each school has its own history, doctrine, and highly autonomous structure. The gender topic indeed varies by school. And the gender issue is likely to be discussed within the context of individual school. But like taking example of South Korea and Japan, the Mahayana Buddhism is prevalent. The scholars in the two countries can work together and investigate like gender issues in different Mahayana schools. And second is the limited number of doctrinal discussions on this topic. For example, a Christian feminist theology has become ind indispensable. The doctrinal research through reading sacred texts is essential in Buddhist studies. And each Buddhist school references Buddhist texts and text-based doctrinal research. But however, it is still difficult to find research papers with gender perspective. It is beneficial 
to exchange opinions on gender perspective text reading with Buddhist scholars in South Korea and Japan. And Buddhism and gender should be discussed by all scholars, regardless of uh, their gender. And what can young people or young scholars of Japan and uh, South Korea expect from an international network? It is sometimes difficult to find a place to share ideas for researchers in interdisciplinary fields, such as Buddhist studies and gender studies. And religious studies become diverse and more consolid consolidated with other academic areas as researchers varying perspectives present their new findings in sizable public arena. And I, I, I myself have been in multiple academic areas that overlap such as religion and Buddhism with ethnicity and gender. The national and international associations like CARS, JARS, and IAHR can aid in bridging scholars by hosting conferences with sessions for new fields in religious studies. And uh, COVID-19 has forced the collaboration of scholars to utilize the internet effectively. International conferences became accessible online, and this one too, and uh, which allows scholars from different parts of the world to participate. We are educated to check the latest findings on the internet. And of course, meeting in per person at conferences would further enhance researchers' development. And as we are in the middle of uh, information and technology era, I would like to suggest a project that CARS, JARS, and IAHR can do. It is to compile a researcher database. The database will include one or more research interests per researcher. The members will quickly find researchers in the world with the same or similar interests via a database on the internet. And regardless, online and in-person academic association continue to be essential for all scholars in the COVID, uh, in the post COVID-19 world. Thank you very much. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you, Aya. Thank you. Um, last speaker is Shin. Shin, could you start yours? Uh, thank you so much for giving me a chance to present my paper. Uh, my name is Shin An. Uh, I'm teaching Phenomenology of Religion at Beijing University in South Korea. Uh, my title is uh, uh, International Networks of World Christianity and the New Religious Movement. Uh, subtitle is a phenomenological interpretation. Uh, first of all, I uh, congratulate the 80th anniversary of JARS uh, and its members. It's great honor to share my memories and present uh, activities and plans of the future with the JARS colleagues and scholars in the world. I appreciate Professor Sat uh, Satoko Fujiwara and the other presenters for organizing this JARS and KARS forum. Religious studies does not encourage researchers to deepen their religious faith or convictions. Instead, this academic discipline opens their eyes to understand the nature of humanity and the structure of society. As a phenomenologist uh, of religion, I now serve as a standing director of research of KARS, CARS, Secretary General of KANR. Oh, wait. Oh, KANR and Vice President of Korean Association of Literature and Religion. 
Also, I member of the Korean Association Peace and Religious Studies. Also, member of the Korean Association of Religious Education. In the 1990s, my Korean mentors wanted to call themselves historians of religions. I have been trained as a scholar of religious studies from Seoul National University through Yale University Divinity School to the University of Edinburgh Divinity School. Uh, at that time, you know, the, my uh, mentor is Kim jong so was trained at UC Santa Barbara uh, with the sociologist of religion, uh, Philip Hammond. And also I studied with Yoon hee -yum. He He was trained at Northwestern University in Illinois. He is a specialized in the history of uh, Korean religions. Jung jin -ong, he's a phenomenologist of religion. He's uh, especially major in uh, Eliade work, Miritia Eliade. Next. My doctoral dissertation is, uh, the title is uh, From Conversion to Transformation, subtitle of Religious Interpretation of Yun Chi Ho. Yun Chi Ho is a Korean who experienced a gradual conversion from Confucianism to Christianity, American Methodism. Yun studied in Japan, China, and the United States. Then he became the nationalist leader in reforming the social structure of democracy and modernization in South Korea. Yun attended the World Parliament of Religions in Chicago, 1893, and the World Missionary Conference in Edinburgh, 1910. His experience of racial discrimination in the South of the United States made him cooperated with Japanese colonialists dreaming of the unification of Japan and Korea. It's a very hard issue, so I wanted to call the dilemma of pro-Japanese nationalists at that time. The critical issue in religious studies of 21st century South Korea are religious pluralism, inter-religious dialogue, and the social responsibility of religion, including religious culture, religious education, and religious welfare. I want to pay attention to the significant theological and the religious studies changes in the, in the international networks of world Christianity and the new religious movement. Today, the Department of Religious Studies is not popular among academic disciplines, but a small number of religious studies scholars were working in various forms of institutes and societies. There are four important centers of religious studies in South Korea, Seoul National University, the only public university which has the Department of Religious Studies, Sogang University, a Jesuit private university, which has the Department of Religious Studies, Hanshin University, a progressive Protestant value related university, which has the Department of Religion and Culture, and the Academy of Korean Studies, a government supported graduate institute, which has a vital program in religious studies. Facing the pressure of recent university reorganization, Catholic University closed the Department of Religious Studies in 2019. And the Methodist Theological University added the Christian Psychological Counseling Department to theological and religious education in 2021. After Gangnam University changed the department name from Philosophy of Religion to Philosophy, it finally closed down the department. The crisis of humanity deprived young scholars of their new research place for the study of religious studies. According to the 2015 census, the Korean religious population has fallen from 53% to 44%. The speed of secularization is fast, and the varieties of new alternative religious phenomena increased rapidly. Korean popular culture, such as K-waves and K-movies, K-pop, 
case poetry has uh, produced new forms of deities, heroes, and heroines in popular cultures. For example, sports stars like Son Hong Min, a male footballer, and Kim Yona, a figure skater. And the 2020 Tokyo Olympic medalist of archery and fencing are loved as cultural icons by the public. Using the cases of Korean paint, movies, and pop music, I interpreted the religious meaning of in Kim Gi Chang's The Life of Jesus and Bong Joon Ho's film Snow Piercer. 2013. In Korean society, the government created religious education for government officers and the public to understand the religious diversity and prevent religious discrimination against the religious minority. From 2010 to 2021, the Ministry of Culture, Sport and Tourism has continued to offer religious education for strengthening religious literacy and human rights. Since the Korean Protestants are very conservative in their religious value and worldview, my research is on the way on the relation of Christianity and Islam and the refugee issue, including Iranian, Yemen, and Afghanistan Muslims. Historically, Korean Protestants initiated missionary works for educational and medical welfare among the Koreans in the 20th centuries. Therefore, I have studied various types of social responsibility of religion and the religious welfare to improve the lives of socially marginalized people, including children, women, the senior, the disabled, and the refugees from North Korea and overseas. Before the pandemic of COVID-19, I spent a sabbatical year at Princeton Theological Seminary in the United States. I attended the regular research meetings and presented papers on Korean Christianity at the World Christianity Conference, hosted by PTS and the Yale Edinburgh Group for the historical and the phenomenological study of non-Western Christianityism sponsored by Yale University. Pioneered scholars such as Professor Lamin Sane of Yale University and Professor Andrew Worth of the University of Edinburgh passed away recently. However, Professor Abe Adogame of Princeton Seminary tries to keep the international networks of the study of world Christianity, including American, African, Asian, and the Latin American Christianities. I have researched Korean and Korean American Christians and their struggles to embrace American culture, exploring the Korean Christian identity of immigration community, which appeared in Lee Isaac Jones' Oscar winning film, Minari, 2021. On the other hand, my ongoing research is about the new religious movement, including Baha'i Faith, Family Federation of World Peace and Unification, we call the Unification Church, Desun Jiliwehe, Raelia Movement, and the Hare Krishna Movement, a course in miracles, Christian science and Scientology, and the Amish. The Center for Studies on New Religions, says Noor, as the International Society for the Study of New Religions, ISSNR, helped my uh, Korean colleagues collaborate with other international scholars and compare Korean New Religious Movement with other cases in terms of belief system, ritual, and community. I attended the annual conferences of SESNUR in Taiwan, Morocco, Israel, and South Korea strengthening academic networks with Chinese, Taiwanese, Japanese, and Vietnamese scholars. When Professor Xin Guangchul of Hanshin University became the president of KARS and KANR, at the same time, two societies organized the annual conferences to interpret the religious responses to the COVID-19 under the name of religion and disaster and the new religion and the COVID-19. 
there I presented a paper about the Korean new religions and the COVID-19 and the Christian science and the Scientology in the era of with COVID-19. No new religious movement are less than 1% of total population in South Korea. Their influence on Korean society is enormous as the COVID-19 outbreak of Shincheonji. It means the new heaven and the earth, or a Christian new religious movement in February 2020. The British Association for the Study of Religion in Oxford 2004, and then European Association for the Study of Religions, Groningen in Netherlands in 2014, and the Helsinki 2016 also gave me good chances to share my research with an international audience. The International Association for the History of Religion, IAHR Congress, has helped me develop my academic concern in Tokyo 2005 and Erhult 2015. The international networks of world Christianity and the new religious movement challenge me to ask creative questions about homo religious in a Korean context. Confessing theological studies of Christianity and Buddhism faced the dilemma of including the student uh, study of religions into the traditional dogmatic boundaries. In South Korea, major theological universities and institutes do not have enough uh, students to, to study theology at the undergraduate level. For example, I started a tenure track professorship of religious studies at Beje University. This university founded by Harry Gerhardt Appenzeller, an American Methodist missionary. My teaching position belonged to the liberal art department to teach Christianity and world religion in general. Four years later, theological department faculty members persuaded me to transfer my position into the, their theological department, which needed an expert of religious studies or religious education to grant their student a secondary school teacher's license. When I became a chair of the department, I made a graduate program. As my mentor, Professor Kim jong so of Seoul National University, often said to me, I think that, quote, religious studies has chosen me, not I have chosen religious studies. End quote. I hope that we have strong collaborations of religious studies, regardless of political, economic, and social barriers. The era of with COVID-19 is not a crisis of our global community, but a chance to reflect on our past endeavors and to seek the solidarity of academic society in South Korea, Japan, and the world. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you for your excellent paper. Now let's move on to discussion. Takaya, could you present your question, comments to the, spe to the speakers? Yes. At first, thank you for your great presentations. This forum, entitled Toward Post COVID 19 Networking, envisioned a cross border religious research network in this pandemic situation. First, Dr. Fuji and Professor Ku Hyun Chan suggested the history of a new field called Cognitive Science of Religion, CSR, and the possibility of collaboration in the East Asia. In fact, I heard that Dr. Fuji and Professor Ku had already met at an international conference. Moreover, both of them shared the lament that there are not many colleagues in their own country who have the same research subject and relatively easy participation in international conference via the in internet, including this forum, will be a collaborative work in the future. I will be very useful, it will be very useful for us. I didn't know anything about CSR, so I briefly read the past treatise by Dr. Fuji published in 
2018. So now I would like to ask uh, Dr. Fuji and uh, Professor Ku some questions. First, is CSO the restoration of the phenomenology of religion? In my understanding, this CSO seems to be a kind of re restoration of phenomenology of religions. Is such my understanding correct? Of course, I understand that CSO emerged from the criticism of intuitional religious phenomenological studies, such as Eliade. But from my point of view, CSO is interested in exploring commonality of religions. To be honest, it seems to be a uh, restoration of religious phenomenology, which tended to decline a little. Therefore, I'd like to ask the difference from religious phenomenological research, such as LDL. Again. Second, the meaning of the, of the word evolutionary. Another question is about the word evolutionary used in the International Association for the Cognitive and Evolutionary Science of Religion, IACESR, to which you belong. The religious evolution theory of the 19th century became fossil with the advent of phenomenology of religion, I think. But it seems that the meaning of the word, uh, word evolutionary or evolution or evolutionary is still anti-phenomenology of religions. So I, I would like to ask uh, the nuance of evolutionary. Third, vision of East Asian contributing to CESR. Finally, could, could you please show us what you think of as a concrete way to contribute to CESR from East Asia. Next, I have a question to uh, Professor Aya Honda. Professor Honda and the Professor An Sin originally focused on a concrete religious network and showed a sketch of how it would fit into this post-COVID-19 era. Professor Honda was originally studying Buddhism in the Japanese American community. She paid particular attention to the activities of women in it. And she is made a significant contribution to religious studies, often criticized as gender blind. It is evaluated that the new religion in Japan is given a place for women to play an active, active role. But it is very interesting how it was in Britain that went abroad, such as the United States. From a broader perspective, East Asia has Buddhism as common denominator. A denominator. Of course, each region has its own style, and as Professor Hond mentioned, problems are raised only within each sect or denomination, and comparative studies between denominations or across national borders are not active so much, I think. The reality is that it has never been done before. For example, the position of Nam in each country is also very different. And as you have pointed out, the fem uh, feminist Buddhism that explores what we should capture today has not been constructed from the common canon of Buddhism. I think, th I think that the issues of Buddhism and gender should continue to be raised in the future. There are two points of, there are two points I would like to ask you. First, position, a possibility of non-solidarity. I have heard that Taiwan and South Korea give a relatively high position from for non 
compared to Japan. I know a little about South Korea, but I hear that Korea has recently improved its status as a noun. How do you think about the possibility of solidarity with nuns in each region? This is a practical issue. Fifth, possibility of feminist, feminist Buddhism, Buddhist scripture study. The other is the possibility of feminist Buddhism that was also announced. This is, so, speak, so to speak, the theoretical problems. Christian feminism theology has been very successful, but what are some possible strategies for Buddhism, which has a huge amount of text and different denominational scriptures? Next, I have a question to Professor Ansin. Professor Ansin said in his dissertation that he featured Yun Chiho, a prominent Korean Christian. Yun Chiho has a person who studied in Japan and the United States and had an international perspective and network. In recent years, research has also been conducted on how his academic background, Confucianism, Chinese poetry, and learning English shaped his personality. In Japan, there, there were many unique Christians in modern times. One researcher has also named it Bushido Warriors Christian. In short, even in East Asia, Christianity is diverse from the beginnings. And I think this, is, uh, this will be an opportunity to deepen mutual understanding. And now, in the 21st century, both South Korea and Japan are increasingly focusing on diversity due to globalization and the, acceptance, and the acceptance of the refugees. I would like to ask Professor Ahn some questions here. Six, diversity of Christian positionality in East Asia. It is uh, true that Christianity in East Asia has many forms, but do you think there, there is still some commonal, commonality or social positionality that connects to network? Last seventh, future outlook for a new religious movement in Japan and Korea. Even in Japan, the number of believers in new religions continues to dec decline. And it is said that their in influence is also declining. Instead, I think it is common between Japan and, uh, Japan and South Korea that in interest in spirituality is gradually spreading. What kind of research network do you think will be effective for new religious and spiritual in the future? Please forgive me uh, 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 the rough question and the rough question and comments. Thank you very much. So thank you, Takaya. Thank you very much. Now for your responses, I will start with Shuhei and go one by one. Shuhei, could you respond to any of these questions? I, I discussed with uh, Dr. Ku and he, he will answer first and second question. So please let's start with him. Okay. No. Hyun-chan, could you respond yeah. to the first two questions? Okay. Thank you, Takaya, for the good questions. Before answering, I have a favor of you to ask. Please call me Hyun-chan or Dr. Gu, because I'm not a professor. Yeah. <laughs> okay, for the first question, mm. it is true that the CSR and the phenomenology of religion have something in common in that they pay attention to cross-culturally mm. recurrent patterns of religious thoughts and behaviors. However, I think many cognitive scientists of religion, uh, myself included, 
would not agree with the view that CESR is the restoration of Eliade's history of religions or phenomenology of religion. Mm. First, CESR does not uh, presuppose universal religiosity or religion as sui generis. Uh, in contrast, what CESR seeks is scientific knowledge and evidence of evolved psychological mechanisms and cognitive constraints that make people think and behave religiously. Uh, second, in CSR, the commonality of religions is not a premise or conclusion, but a, a problem to be explained scientifically. CSR tries to explain the why and how of the commonality based on evolution and cognition. Uh, this is true not only for commonality, but also uh, for cultural differences and particularities. Let's talk about the second question, which I think is uh, very important. Um, in CSR, the evolution is basically a biological term mm. that uh, refers to changes in the frequency of genes within a population. So it is not just a matter of nuance or meaning, nor metaphor. Thus, the evolution here is completely different from the fossilized 19th century theories of social evolution. Rather, the evolution in CSR is directly linked to the Darwinian ideas, such as natural selection, sexual selection, adaptations, byproducts, gene culture, coevolution, epidemiology, evolutionary psychology, and behavioral ecology, none of which had been discussed properly in the 19th century's uh, social evolution theories of religion. Explanation of the origins and mechanisms of religious thoughts and behaviors requires uh, integrated scientific research covering the brain, cognition, culture, and evolution. And the most important keyword that connects all of them is evolution. In order to understand the word evolutionary in CSR, we need to refer to the um, contemporary sciences of the 21st century, not the social evolution theories of the 19th century. Thank you. Thank you. Then Shuhei, are you gonna respond to the third question? Hey, yes. I'd like to answer to the third question, which asks about the concrete way to contribute to CSR from East Asia. First, I will explain weird problem that Hyun Chan mentioned earlier. In recent years, scholars of CSR have pointed out that the psychological research to date has been weird. Weird does not mean strange. It is an abbreviation for Western educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic. They state that the mentality found so far has been Western centric, as most research has been done on weird people. As a result, the importance of studying non Western societies is now recognized, and the methods used to do so are changing from laboratory based to anthropological field experiments. This view seems to be in line with recent critical perspectives in wage studies. Now, as a concrete way, I can suggest replicating experiments that have already been done in the West. For example, Boyer's minimally counterintuitive theory has not yet been tested in Japan. By doing this, we can test whether this theory is universally applicable or not. In addition, and Dr. <laughs> Ku uh, mentioned his study uh, concerning region and morality, which has much to contribute. In our known science, Big God, the supernatural punishment hypothesis states that people who believe that 
supernatural beings are watching them from the above will become moral. From a non-Western perspective, this claim seems to have a monotheistic bias. So we need to examine whether people in West East Asia can also become moral when they think about God. Or perhaps we could discuss the possibility of being moral without God-like supernatural agents. I have just discovered a study on the relationship between all of nature and morality in the convention of the Japanese Psychological Association. This kind of research will be important as an East Asian perspective. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, significant replies. The next. Yes, Aya-san. Hey, um, uh, Professor Kawase, thank you very much for uh, comments and uh, good questions. And I would like to start uh, from a possibility of non-solidarity. And I would like to say um, it's, it's maybe possible, but it's also difficult. And the uh, difficult part is uh, probably I said it in the, my presentation too, it's uh, lives of uh, female, like ordained uh, clergy, uh, they are very different. And some people go to like monastery and they stay there. And some people are live in secular life. And, and some people are not married, not married like celibacy. And some people are married. So um, the situation of uh, a nun, you say uh, it's an ordained female. And the situation of ordained women are very different. That's the maybe difficulty of, of, uh, of nuns to, to kind of get together and make a big group. And, uh, but maybe it's possible. Why I said that is uh, uh, if they gather under the same goal, like, uh, like for example, like Sagadita, they have one goal, like gender equality. It, once they find this um, uh, one goal, then they can pursue in the uh, in a big group, or they can form a big group and together. But it's it's always difficult to change the system, or maybe change the current um, like status quo, or maybe the uh, maybe way of thinking. But uh, maybe the rewards are very great. And does it answer your question? <laughs> Okay, hi. Uh, this is a, a question for number four. Uh, answer my answer for number four, and number five. Uh, possibility of uh, feminist Buddhism. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, and I was reading uh, Doctor uh, uh, Noriko Kawahashi Sensei's book, and she also mentioned mm -hmm. that uh, she's a leading scholar of uh, Buddhism and gender studies in Japan. And she also said that uh, gender perspective lacks in uh, script scriptural um, uh, reading or the text reading part in Buddhism. And she also said that uh, feminist, we can learn something from the development of feminist theology. And I agree with that. Uh, I think we can learn something from the, what the female, uh, what the women were doing in Christianity. And uh, aside from that, I would like to talk a little bit about this uh, uh, textual reading part. And when I was at, at the temple in the United States, there was a Sunday service. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, after the Sunday service, mm -hmm. uh, people get together. And uh, there are different names for this uh, group, but uh, you can go there anytime. And the members go and the ministers will go too. And there, what they talk about is they listen to the minister's sermon, uh, and then they discuss about that, or they read the text, so they discuss about that. The, the, this place is donuts and coffee is served, and we, we kind of have this uh, casual kind of meeting. And uh, this kind of uh, place is very important for, for people to, to not just read the text or not just listen to the sermon, but also how they take the sermon, how they take the text to their own lives. 
and they can like express them or they can share them with the with other people and the place like this is also also the women are, are also in this place and this is a good place for everybody to understand how like women experience different things how they connect their experiences to that uh what is written in the text or what ha they have um what they have listened in the service so this kind of uh, uh place is very important for for the start of uh, gender and uh, buddhism uh, studies and uh, unfortunately i don't see many of the the these uh like uh, uh casual places in at uh, japanese uh, buddhist temples in japan thank you Yes, in please. Thank you for questioning. Uh, yeah, very good question. Of course, uh, there are uh, many common ground, uh, you know, such as the you know, concept of God and focus of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus' story is about you know the crucifixion and the resurrection and the, the activity of the Holy Spirit and also you know the using the bread and wine at the Eucharist and also. They are, you know, the respecting and are reading the Bible, but there are many, you know, the common ground. But in the study of religious studies in South Korea, uh, our, you know, the focus, academic concern is move from the commonality mm. to the differences. Like, you know, uh, 19, uh, 1990, we are, we, are, we are comparing, you know, the Buddhism, Christianity, uh, with uh, you know the Islam or the you know the other Hinduism, but yeah. now is you know the some recent changes more focus on you know the differences uh, you know the uh, like the you know the Jonathan Smith you know yeah. you know the earlier day is more generalist, but uh, now is a uh, scholar of religious religious studies in South Korea is more become the particularist you know the, yeah. their own tradition or focus on you know the particular dimension of you know the religious you know the uh, phenomena so also you know the there are you know the huge diversity in south korea but the uh, as i say you know the at conference often say you know the there are three kind of uh, korean christians uh, first type of uh, first type is a uh, uh, conservative christians in south korea Second type is a more conservative <laughs> Christian, and third type is the ultra conservative <laughs> Christians. So why? Because you know the we uh, got the Christian message from the American missionary. Yeah. At that times, you know the very conservative American missionary, you know the spread Christian message to you know the Korean mind. So this mm -hmm. is why. But now is a uh, progressive. Uh, Christian group is uh, growing up, very small number. Uh, progressive Christian, you know, the uh, related university, Hanshin University, they have their own uh, department of religion and culture. This is why, because, you know, more liberal part or the more progressive part, they are embraced the uh, academic discipline of religious studies. Mm. Second question is a very good question. You know? Now is a uh, Korean religious population is decreasing, you know. Uh, maybe uh, we we have another census 20, uh, 25, 23. Maybe the more you know the uh, much more people you know the left will leave the religious community. So so we are now talking about the theme of uh, spiritual reality rather than you know the uh, religion itself. So. Uh, this is why, you know, the, my, I focus on, you know, the new religious movement. Uh, sometimes, you know, the, we have a large group of uh, Raelian movement, UFO religious group in South Korea. So why? Uh, young generation, they don't like, you know, the old form of religions. They want to new, you know, the uh, insight from the new religious groups. Especially, you know, the, the era of Corona-19, gave them a good chance to communicate, you know, beyond the time and space, you know, the, they are uh, contacting you know, the many different groups. So we now is talking about the double belonging. 
one person has many different you know, the religion at the same time. So Christian also they have to uh, belong to the new religious movement. Mm. Also, another theme is about you know, the believers without belonging. You know, the, we call the you know Canaan, Canaan Christian, which means you know the they uh, do not go to church, but they uh, identify themselves as Christians. So this group is growing up very fast among the young gen young generation. So uh, thank you for your questioning. So uh, your question challenged me to you know the deepen my you know the interest. Thank you so much. Also, in the future, I think, you know, the, uh, in my group in South Korea, especially, you know, the new religious group, yeah. they have a big concern about, you know, the Japanese new religious movement. Mm. So they wanted to cooperate in terms of study of new religions mm. because, you know, the uh, Sokagaka International yeah. is very strong in South Korea. Mm. Or Tenni, Tenni, sure. yeah. Yeah. yes. Tennigo is also very strong in southern part of South Korea. So many, you know, the scholars wanted to study whether they were presented annually in to the, you know, the so, uh, Korean Association in New Religions. So, so in the future, I wanted to invite, you know, the uh, Japanese colleague to, you know, the present your perspective about uh, Korean religion whether comparing, you know, the uh, Korean ones or mm. Japanese ones. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I hope so. <laughs> then uh, I would also like to make some comments. I will focus on three issues regarding the topic of networking. First, I've noticed an interesting generation gap among us. Both Shin and I study abroad and obtain a PhD. And as far as I know, Aya lived in the United States for some years has made and has maintained her network with her local with the local community she belongs to. Hmm. But the three of, us, three of us have thus spent many years becoming proficient in English. Mm. By contrast, neither Hyun-chan nor Shuhei has attended the University of Rural to earn a degree. Yet, both got involved in international networks at an quite an early stage and have already made remarkable achievements making use of the networks. Their success may have something to do with the nature of the emerging field of CESR. As both Hyun-chan and Shuhei said, any substantial CESR research requires a team. It can't be done alone. In addition, CESR welcomes contributions from outside the West, and therefore senior scholars in the field are willing to reach out to young Asian scholars. There may be also some other factors that are giving current graduate students new challenges or benefits. New challenges include stronger pressure on students to finish their PhD programs in fewer years and increased economic instability at both personal and institutional levels. New benefits include the development of networking tools such as academia.com and LinkedIn and increased opportunity for publication due to the proliferation of academic journals. In short, conditions for academic networking have significantly changed in the past 10 or 20 years, mm. although the old way still has its own strengths. Second, owing to the speakers, I've also realized that the CARS and the JARS share many research interests. However, the traditional style of collaboration based on different national associations represented by Forum for Religious Studies in East Asia and its precedent attempts has been unsustainable. Specific, specific targeted research project with the prospect of concrete outcomes may be more welcomed by younger scholars mm -hmm. and thus more easily lead to sustainable networks. Invitations to co-author articles in English will also facilitate collaborations. I'm wondering, with some improvements, whether the IAHL Facebook group can work as a researcher database to serve such purposes. Hmm. Now let me explore that possibility. And third, I've noticed that there is one more boundary that has not yet been discussed by our speakers. Well, I have mentioned this a little bit, but I'm gonna expand this. Whereas CSR has predominantly been a men's world, 
So has NRM studies, new readers movement studies in Japan at least, but probably in South Korea too, right? Mm -hmm. And interesting, interestingly, while NRM studies in the United States and Europe have been developed by notable female scholars such as Irene Berger and Catherine Wessinger, and but those in Japan have mostly been represented by male scholars. By contrast, few male scholars have seriously been engaged in gender studies. Therefore, this forum seems to be a rare occasion for scholars in these genderly divided fields to get together. I hope this forum will initiate more gender conscious CSRS research as well as the enhancement of gender studies and NRM studies with CSR methods. So, so um, now I would like to open the discussion to the floor. And does anyone have any questions or comments? Can I comment on the uh, Professor Fujiwara's remark? Yes, please. Yeah, so uh, actually in South Korea, we have many female scholars of religious studies. So especially, you know, the, uh, they are more focused on new religious movement. Oh, really? Yeah, mm. so um, next time, you know, the, I'm all, uh, a part of mid-career or old generation, maybe uh, if possible, I mean, <laughs> Uh, introduce you to you know the you know, new scholar of you know the female scholar because you know the in South Korea uh, you know the as I also mentioned about you know the the value is very conservative it means you know the feminist uh, interpretation of religion is very you know the unpopular their feminism is uh, criticized politically in South Korea this is why they are you know the very slow to adopt you know the feminism or womanistic approach, you know, the, to understand the religious. So I think, you know, that this is a kind of a difference between uh, Japanese context to a Korean context. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, that's very interesting. Yes, Shuhei, please. Uh, listening to Professor Fujiwara's comment, uh, I, I realize uh, another element uh, that is important for networking. <laughs> uh, this is uh, English, <laughs> English competence. Mm -hmm. So we are not, not specialists uh, for the other country. So uh, in, in order to know the others uh, studies, so <laughs> it, it must be written in English. So yeah, to, to write and publish in, in English is very important, I think. Yes, it is. And English is still a huge barrier, language barrier for all of us and yeah. All right, then, uh, thank you. Thank you everyone for attending this session. And thank you very much, um, An, uh, Professor Shin An and, and Dr. Hyun Chang Koo for attending this session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much. For presiding and presenting and commenting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. 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 Thank yeah, thank you so much for yeah. your you know, the commenting or uh, questioning. Also, Satoko, thank you for your kind of presiding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to thank all the four speakers and respondents. Yeah. yeah, I thank you for having me uh, in this forum. Uh, yeah. I've learned a lot and it's a, a great experience for me yeah. to work together with you all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the JARS International Connections Committee, we will reflect on what we discussed today and take the second step to foster mm. communication, collaboration between mm. the CARS and JARS and beyond. Mm. Mm -hmm. Professor Satoko Sensei, thank you Hi. very much for coordinating everything. <laughs> Satoko. Very, very nice. Yeah, nice meeting yeah. Uh, Dr. Ku and Professor oh. Anne. I really wanted to ask you a little bit about your research, current research. Mm -hmm. 
like how like Buddhism is seen in in the, in your like a re, in research and how Buddhism is doing in South Korea and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. maybe we can cooperate, we can collaborate after this. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>